Welcome back to ATF Garage. Instead of covering the racing side of things, today we will be getting down and dirty with the mechanical side. The video today will be longer than usual as it will be wholly uncut, albeit sped up. Too many times other videos show complex tasks being completed quickly and with ease. This can misrepresent the reality of completing an intricate project, leading many others who attempt to imitate to get disheartened. Although this specific task isn't particularly difficult, it can be very time consuming. So as to not mislead, the video will be shown sped up, but it's an entirety. Everything in this video was completed with basic hand tools and in a small portion of driveway and or sidewalk, and accomplished in street parking. You can do this almost anywhere. For safety, I had a car parked behind me and put out cones where possible. So now, let's get to the video. Gasoline leaks are fairly commonplace with older vehicles. As the car ages, so do weathered components, so from time to time you're going to have to replace some sections you really don't want to. These old Mopars are no exception. These in particular tend to leak from the fuel tank grommet that connects around the filler tube as seen here. However, unlike most leaks, it doesn't leave a puddle when parked, because it only escapes when in motion, nor a trail to follow because it evaporates so quickly. In order to avoid this, try to apply a periodic checklist of known problem areas to prevent future issues. The engine may not be a gas hog, you may just have a leak. Normally, with a minor issue like this, a direct part swap would be the remedy. However, considering its age and the likelihood of negligence for routine maintenance, the best course of action would be to address the fuel cell in its entirety. With this in mind, there are essentially two options, recondition or replace. Taking age and rust into account, structural integrity may be questionable, so purchasing a new up-to-date fuel system would probably be the best direction to take. There are a few reasonably priced kits online. Research what specific kits meet the criteria. Once purchased, take inventory of all listed items. You don't want to start a project and halfway through realize you are missing a very key product for completion. The kit should come with the tank and vibration pad, strap covers, fuel sending unit, tank straps, sending cover and gasket, filler neck gasket, strap hangers, and the specialty nuts and bolts. With all items accounted for, we can test the sending unit. First grab a multimeter and set it to ohms. Next place the ground clamp on the outlet tube and the positive probe on the circuit channel cap. Full should test at roughly 10 ohms and empty around 77 ohms. Be sure to operate the float slowly and it's an entirety to test complete function. The tank is located at the rear of the vehicle in between the two shocks just behind the differential. Be sure to disconnect the fuel line and circuit cap at the top. There are two hanger bolts here and here. Spray them liberally with a solvent. They will be removed shortly. There are a total of five Phillips head screws that hold the trunk floor seal in place. You may have to pry it off with a couple of flat head screwdrivers as it is most likely the original seal and stuck. Gather up all five screws and keep them close. They are small and very easily misplaced. Dislodge the filler neck from the tank Separate the old gasket and completely remove the filler neck from the trunk. Now that everything is disconnected, we can begin to remove the straps. Try to loosen each side evenly and symmetrically. Then use a jack to support the base of the tank. With the weight of the tank now firmly on the jack, you can completely disconnect the straps. Now pry the two mating surfaces until the tank is completely dislodged. While the weight begins to shift, slowly depress the jack. As the tank starts nearing the ground, try to move it as symmetrically as possible. This may require you to physically maneuver the corners. Once out, simply pull and remove. This next step is optional. The tank will be subjected to pretty harsh conditions on the road so a coat of bed liner spray should help protect it. Rough up the surface with a scuff pad. This will give the paint something to adhere to. Do your best to tape and clean the edges of the sending unit mount. The more polished the trim, the better the finished product. Once cleaned, apply a liberal coat of liner to the surface. Keep your hand six to eight inches away and parallel to the area being sprayed. Apply slow, even coats with one to two inches of overlap. Once dried, insert the fuel sending unit, gasket, and cover into the tank. Be sure the fuel line port is pointed to the top of the tank for proper installation. 
Grab a hammer and striking flathead screwdriver and install the cover clockwise. Measure and trim the vibration pad. Be sure to mock fit and alter it before final installation. Apply a liberal coat of adhesive spray to the base. Pay close attention to the corners and folds to ensure complete coverage. Any area not covered will vibrate and chafe. This will cause permanent damage. Depending on your specific make and model, these auxiliary vacuum connections may be unneeded. A box of assorted vacuum caps should have every size you will need. Twist them on until you feel each of them bottoming out. Next, install the filler neck gasket. Place one portion slightly inside the tank and rotate it until the median gap is resting on the mounting point. Next, the new tank straps will need to be mirrored to the old ones. The most simple way to do this is to use the old ones as a template. Separate each set and place them on top of one another. Slowly mimic the bend and angle of each until both new straps are perfectly mirrored to the old ones. Now apply the strap vibration pads onto the tank facing side using adhesive spray. Now that everything is properly prepared, place a soft cushion on the jack's pad and mount the tank in a position where it is completely balanced. As you are slowly raising the tank in place, stop immediately if you hit any resistance as this usually means you have caught a corner. As you visually guide the tank, physically maneuver the corners as it is going to be a very tight fit. Now, with the tank in place, install one strap and connect it to a hanger bolt. These bolt setups are a two nut installation with a lock washer in between. Slowly advance the nut until the strap begins to tighten. Add some thread lock for added assurance. The outside nut has a specialty allen lock. Be sure to snug that as well. Once secure, duplicate the same steps on the opposite side. With the tank now secured, you can begin the process to mock fit, trim, and connect both fuel lines to the fuel sending unit. Be precise when trimming. One cut too short and you will have to start the process all over. Be sure to leave enough slack to accommodate for road vibration. Now grab the trunk to floor seal and make a relief cut on the inseam. These are notoriously difficult to manipulate and if you can find a way to install it without having to make that cut, more power to you. Once placed on the tube, spray lubricant on both sides. Place the tail end into the tank grommet. It may need some persuading from a dead blow hammer. If so, twist, push, and pull until the filler tube begins to seat correctly. Then tap on the gas cap mount with the hammer until the pipe hits the precise depth. Once set, screw in the last five bolts and the job is finally complete. So let's check out the finished product in action. As you can see, no leaks with the stagnant test, nor any around the edges or seams, and the hanger bolts and straps are looking nice and taut. But as we know, this is only half the battle. Let's move on to the rolling test. So far so good. The tank is not leaning or bouncing with the oncoming bumps and dips, nor is the filler neck gasket leaking with the swaying of the vehicle or road vibration. Looks like the job was successful. This will hopefully hold up for years to come. Hopefully, after watching this video, you have a better understanding of what it takes to complete a job like this. This took roughly 3-5 to five working hours to complete, start to finish. Next week, we will continue the head-to-head -head battles between the 225 Slant 6 and the 318 V8. As always, if there are any issues or ideas you would like to see tackled in upcoming videos, feel free to post them in the comment section below. I really appreciate all of your continued support, it's what keeps this channel going. If you like what you saw and would like to see more, comment, like, and subscribe. Be sure to hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos.